cancer clusters are particularly troublesome from a scientific point of view to investigate. And the reason for this is some of the things that kind of lay the groundwork for cancer risk happened a long time ago. So if you go to a community now and people are concerned about cancer incidents or maybe even cancer deaths in that community, you have to understand that with the way cancer works, with its long latency period, sometimes greater than 20 or 30 years, even smokers don't get sick right away, imagine. So we really don't have the information about those long years of latency, and that makes it really difficult to recreate and understand what may have happened there. So we're starting at a scientific disadvantage. For instance, if we have an outbreak of a waterborne disease, we might still find the bugs in the drinking water. We have an outbreak of a foodborne disease, you can go to the refrigerators of people and see what they ate the night before. That's not the case with 30 years ago where there may have been an environmental exposure, a chemical exposure, or other risk factors that would lead to increased cancer incidence in a community. Most of the time when people look at what are called clusters, uh, what, they, what we've found is that either there's not enough sample size, there's not enough exposure, there's not enough ability to control all of the possible confounding or complicating factors to be able to say with any certainty that yes, there's an increase in cancer compared with the general population or no, there's not. And, and so going in, one of the things that we always try to talk with people about is how rare these are, not because we don't want to do, with, to do them, uh, but because they are very challenging and most of the time historically we have not been able to come up with a definitive answer that says yes there's an increase in cancer here or there's a real cluster here. You know oftentimes the most difficult part of this process for me and I think for anybody who's engaged in it is to take what is a it, it's a real concern it's 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 grounded in real experience it's grounded in real knowledge um, and, and it's, it's asking the question, I know all these people with cancer, how is it that this has happened? And trying to answer that question, whether I'm a clinician in private practice with this person as my patient, uh, where I've had that same conversation, or in a community where the community is like, it's a community patient, and it's asking the same question, how did this happen, how could this be, and isn't this something that for which there is a cause? And you know, cancer is a, a cancer is a set of diseases with multiple causes. Um, many of those have to do with environment. A lot of those have to do with gen, uh, genetics. A lot of them have to do with personal exposures, occupation. A lot of them have to do with factors that we don't understand at this point. And so, when somebody says, and, and as we had this conversation in, with Fort Detrick individuals, with people in the community who said, I know. X number of people with cancer, can you say for sure that this was not caused by some environmental exposure? And I'd have to admit to them candidly, look, I cannot say for sure that there wasn't an environmental uh, exposure here, especially outside of the registry data, I can't say that at all. However, um, uh, what I can say is for this period of time, this is what we know The first line of discussion should have to do with the denominator. So it's 60 people, but how many people are there who live on that street or have lived on that street over the past how many years? Uh, a second is what I think of as the, the helpful analogy of the Texas sharpshooter. Why is attention focused on this street? Now, the Texas sharpshooter is the one who shoots at the side of the barn and then goes and draws a little circle around every place a bullet went in. You know, if you pick things after the fact, because it looks like there's something odd, you run into that problem immediately. I'm not saying there aren't any clusters. I think there are. The question that the public health expert has to, has to deal with is, how do you separate the clusters that have a definable cause from the ones that occur just by chance. 
we do try to use a, a weight of evidence approach where we'll, we'll, we'll consider as, as many variables as we can and as much of the literature as we can and, 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 and to be conservative about how we make that judgment call about likely or unlikely. It, it's not easy and you're right, it can be very, it can be unsatisfying to community members to hear us use language that is vague because we can't give them firm answers in, in many ways. But I, I think we, we do try to err on the side of caution. And if there's a chance that, that, that it could have caused an ex a health effect, we will say that.